this is one of my favorite designs that I've made for Halloween and to give away as gifts. Certainly you can sell these and make money with the file. These are a two-part design that's done in a laser. The reason why that I wanted to do the haunted house over the edge is I've really always enjoyed homes that were kind of suspect, like all the homes in the Outer Banks. It's kind of like scary. So it really does scream Halloween. Homes on cliffs with the ocean. But I was imagining a story here that the house was built on a cliff and there's a basement that you can jump off the cliff in case you're just kind of sick of your haunted people. And there is a tutorial at the end of this video if you're interested. I cut these out of cardboard because it was really fast. So if you're kind of like me, Shipping is very expensive with materials. Um, cardboard is really good. Do not use double flute like court, like uh, the double one. It will catch on fire. The single flute was great. So what I did is I cut these out of single flute and then I glued them together with a glue stick and then did in my new paint booth, um, I did the um, black, flat black, just really, really cheap flat back with the respirator. This one is um, has a little witch, and it has a pumpkin and some other things. Probably what I learned in this design is it got too busy. I think it would look a lot better if it wasn't in cardboard because you get you're getting a lot of artifacts and a lot of shadow artifacts that you would normally not get. I saw this on Etsy, so I wanted to try it out. And the first thing I realized it was uh, too big for my um, little fake door here, my prop. So what I did is I made a little guy and the little guy is right there. So I have all these files linked below and more, but now let's get into the tutorial of how I made my Libius Woods. That's the artist that I like as an architect um, style uh, haunted house and why I designed this haunted house the way I did and um, what I look forward to more with a series of these buildings on this cliff. Let's get into the tutorial. It's made in Illustrator. I have a couple different laser cutters, but that's not really what's important. The, um, I, I will tell you the one thing is when you're buying files, make sure that they're light burn ready. In terms of the loops being closed, and it's a lot of work. You think you're buying something that's already done, and what you really want is someone that tests it. Um, and that is see the product actually in physical form. So make sure you see a real photo of the product or a video before you go and jump in because there's a lot of intricacy that goes in some of these designs that I wouldn't want to have a faulty file. I don't use an iPad when I'm first drawing like for this haunted house that I'm about to do. I use a Wacom tablet, a 13 inch Wacom tablet versus an iPad. I have an iPad, I just don't use it because I don't like going back and forth, and I like having the native Illustrator. So even if I'm drawing inside of Lightburn Inkscape or the program I use for Metal or CNC, I like to use this Cintiq. It's Wacom Cintiq, it's a graph tablet, but it connects to an HDMI and through USB. So I'm gonna block out and draw how I did the haunted house, and I'm gonna talk to you how I got it all ready to go to the laser. Um, and of course, if you're int not interested in this all, I have the file down below and I'm looking forward to making a ton more of these because honestly, I just truly loved making them. It was really fun to make the basement and stuff like that. So let's get into this Illustrator tutorial. It's about the same for Inkscape. So let's get going. I'm going to block out the actual door size and then I'm going to draw the basic outline of the house. Okay, so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm making two bars that will be the size I want. So each of those is 12 inches. I'm starting to draw in using the paintbrush tool. And the paintbrush tool allows me a great deal of flexibility because the lines are connected. This first layer is going to be a scratch layer. It's going to be a reference layer. I'm basically looking at a bunch of different haunted house images and haunted house images and I'm just trying to come up with something. It's going to be blocked into these blocks. So this is just an example. This wasn't the one that I did, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put this on another layer 
and I'm going to make this layer a little bit grayed out. So I'm just thinking about the stairs in the basement right now, and I'm thinking about that. So what I'm going to do is, okay, I know that that was a crap layer, so I'm going to go ahead and make the bottom layer a little bit less transparent, and I'm going to draw over it. This way I can get a little bit more fine-tuned in what I want to do. I'll do this over and over again. I used to do this on the iPad, and now I'm just doing it on the Wacom Cintiq. So again, I'm just working through things, practicing. This is not the one. I'm just having fun listening to music. And really, I'm showing you now that you can do a bunch of tools with the path um, menu item. You can clean up stuff. You can close loops. You can do tons of stuff. But really what we need to do now is I need to make things a compound object so that we can join them. And that's probably the most amount of work. And you should just practice making a compound object or a compound path with a donut. So I'm trying to make this compound going back and forth and a bunch of my paths are not connected. So I'm using command J to go ahead and to connect all of these paths. So I have a closed loop so it all works inside of Lightburn. Now we're taking a look at the production file, the file that if you get this file, this is what it is. And so the dotted lines are just basically my copyrights so the file doesn't get stolen because it took me a couple days to make this file. So the way that it was broken up is the bottom basement is one part, the stairs are below it, then there is the top structure on top, and then if you want, let me go ahead and delete these little remnants here, if you want, you can... you spray paint something below it to give that glow underneath the, the glow. And so you can glue that in the back. I put them all in a 19 by um, 10 inch file. It has little brackets that I'm not going to show that I don't have listed here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm cleaning up a few things here. I'm going to go ahead and put those brackets in now just to show you where the brackets go. So I'm going to grab this bracket here. I'm going to hold down my option key and hit and let it go. I'm going to fill this in and then I'm going to use my eyedropper tool because I want it to be the same as this here. So now that I have that, I want these all to be a compound path. So I'm going to go to compound make and now they're all see-through object compound path make. And now I have these two objects. Now I'm going to go put these in. Now these were intended to be little girders. Um, and so I'm going to make them a slightly different color. And that's pretty much it. This file is here. Of course, the dotted lines are just for copyright. Whatever you do, make something that connects someone. Love you. Peace out. Have a great weekend or the rest of your week or whatever day it is. Thanks for watching.